serve. And whether we like it or not, the violations were that she mishandled classified information. And that you could be punished for that if you were still employed by the federal government. And uh, whether she was or not, you know, of course she's not doing that sort of thing anymore. But the, the issue is, was there a criminal act in the mishandling of classified information? She didn't pass on, she didn't perform a criminal act with the intent to perform a criminal act in the mishandling of classified information. And whether we like it or not, she's, she's pretty clear of that. So she can't really be, I don't see how you can prosecute someone for that. Mm -hmm. Because no criminal act was performed. Mishandled the information and you're in jeopardy of holding on to your security clearance and you're in jeopardy of holding on to your job. Yes. But being prosecuted for the mishandling of that, that, that classified information, I don't think you can. Now, Mr. Donald Trump says that he would try to prosecute um, Ms. Clinton, Ms. Clinton for, for that. I, I don't think you can because it's already been done. It's an open and shut case already by, by the Bureau. Mm -hmm. And if the Bureau says there was no criminal act involved in the mishandling of classified information, then there was no criminal act. Negligence, yes. Negligence, where you can lose your, like I said, you can use your, lose your security clearance, you can lose your job, yes. But to be, to be prosecuted for, because there was no criminal act there, or criminal, criminal intent, I don't think we can go down that road. What about the Deputy Undersecretary, Mr. Kennedy, who allegedly had tried to convince the FBI to change the code for the classified documents so that they will be stored somewhere where it will never be discovered in exchange for requests by the FBI to have more agents in the other countries where there are none. Oh, uh, the classified, not, not wasn't the code, it was the, um, the classification level of, uh, of a certain document. Um, well, let's say, let's say in fact that if, if he was offered that, I, I see two different things that were, that are being lost by the media. Number one is that even if you offer that to an FBI agent, uh, quick pro quo, the likelihood of an FBI agent to bite into that is slim to none because the integrity of the Bureau, and I'm not just seeing through rose-colored glasses, the integrity of the Bureau is as pure as you can get. And to have that, in the, to, for an individual to take a deal such as that, that's not gonna happen. Number two, that individual being offered that by the state, allegedly being offered that by the State Department, it, it doesn't work out that way because the person, the, if, even if you offered, let's say that, that if you presented that offer to that FBI agent, that FBI agent would not really give a damn on whether or not there were more seats overseas because the, the office that is responsible for that is the, the Office of International Operations, actually IOD now, Inter International Operations Division. They're the ones who would be excited in getting more seats, more positions overseas. They're the division within the FBI, a percentage of the FBI, a small percentage of the FBI, who would be, who would have any sort of interest in getting more seats overseas. And so this IOD, Agents from IOD up and down, they would be the ones excited. The normal Joe, or he, and again, and I got, I, I suppose it wasn't really a normal Joe, it's probably more of a senior level and seasoned agent. Unless that guy was IOD, he probably wouldn't even get excited about that offering, offering different positions, different seats to the FBI overseas.